Math 265A, Quest to College, I'm Joe Vasta, and we are doing section Bug 1. So what is Bug 1? Well, Bug 1 happens to be the start of learning calculus concepts through a bug on a number line. Suppose a bug is moving on a number line. So all the bug's going to do is he's, he's going to just be walking, you know, maybe to the right, and then maybe he'll be backing up going back to the right again and that's all he's going to be doing just walking back and forth on the number line at time t which is measured in seconds his position is s s represents the feet from the origin so when he's over here at nine his position is nine when he's over here at negative seven his position is negative seven let f of t equal s and we'll get into that when we answer this question here. So let's just look at what's happening with the bug here. That at time zero, the bug is at the origin. And then after six seconds, the bug has now moved over to negative two. So at six seconds, the bug is at negative two. And then the bug starts traveling this way. The bug starts going to the right and he reaches about three at 20 seconds, turns around, or maybe not turns around, maybe he starts just backing up, and at 21 seconds, he's about here at one. So this question here just wants you to get used to this. It says at six seconds, the bug's position is how many feet? So at six seconds, well, we have time six. Where is the bug at six? The bug is at negative two feet. So that is the answer there. Now we could use this function notation and say that f of six equals negative two. The input is time, which is measured in seconds, and the output is position. So they could have asked and they didn't. What is f of 20? So where's the bug after 20 seconds? Well, here's 20 right here, and the bug would be where? At 3 on the number line. So it is a function because every input, the inputs are time, has exactly one output, which is position. This function right here we'll refer to this as the position function. This whole description of the bug moving on a number line, in calculus books sometimes you'll see it being called rectilinear motion. And this is what we're going to study. We're going to study the bug going back and forth. Now, when the bug is traveling this way to the right, he has a velocity. And we'll talk about velocity more, on, more late, you know, later on. But his velocity as he goes to the right is positive. As the bug goes to the left, and this is going to be weird for some of you, his velocity, he's backing up, is a negative velocity. Okay, so that is the deal with velocity. More about velocity later on. Let's go ahead and do our second problem. The section on bug one is not found in the book, but it's totally gonna help us understand some complicated calculus topics. Okay, well now look what we have here we have a function. Now remember a function, every input has one output and the picture of the function, it passes the vertical line test. The input of the function is on the x-axis and in this case it is time. So this is time right here, which is seconds. And the output, which is the y-axis, represented by the y-axis, is position 
on the number line represented by feet. So they want us to draw a diagram to represent the motion of the bug. So the, here's a number line right here and the bug's going to be traveling on the number line and somehow this graph describes what the bug's doing. Um, there's a few approaches on this so I'll go with the straightforward approach and then the other approach some of you might like just as, as good. What does this point represent? First of all let's label this point. This point is negative 2 comma 1. Well, negative 2, it might not make sense to you that time could be negative, but negative 2 just means 2 minutes ago, or 2 seconds ago. So 2 seconds ago, the bug is at position 1. So I'll put a dot right there. What happens from here to here? Well, let's label this point. This is at negative 1 seconds. The bug is at where? At 3. So negative one second, so he went from position one to position three, which means the bug goes like that from here to here. So that's how it's going to start. So you might have remembered on this one, the bug started at time zero and started traveling to the left. On this one, the bug is starting at time, and we'll put the time, time negative two, and the bug is traveling to the right. Well, now what happens? Now the graph starts going down, which means the positions are getting less than three, which means there's a turnaround here. So the bug is turning around at position three. And what happens? Well, we come all the way to this point, which is one comma zero. At one second, the bug is at zero. So I'm going to make this diagram go all the way to zero. And his turnaround time was negative one. So I'll go t equals negative one. So now he's at position zero. Remember the position is denoted with the, the y coordinate. And then what's going to happen? Now the y coordinate is going to increase again and he's looks like right here is a turnaround. It looks like when you have the tops of hills or the bottoms of valleys, that's when the bug turns around. So then he starts heading to this point right here, which is three comma two. So at time three, he's at two. So on the diagram down here, he's gonna turn around and then go to two. Of course, he's gonna turn around again and then let's label this point. This is the point five comma negative three. He's going to turn around at position two and then go to negative three. And you can put a little arrow here to denote that's what the bug's doing. And we should put our turnaround time. So right here at time zero, I mean, not time zero, at position zero, his time is one. So time equals one. And then he goes to position two at time three. So this is time equals three. And then he goes to position five. I said that wrong again. He goes to position negative three at time five. So this is time equals five. And so there's his travels right there. Starts off at negative two, and here's negative one seconds, and then here's one second, and here's three seconds, and here's five seconds. And so this is the bug diagram that's similar to the one that we saw here. So we were given this, and we were asked a question, and now we are given the graph of the position function where the x-axis is time and the y-axis is position, and we're asked to draw the diagram. Okay, a little confusing when you're not used to it. I'm going to show you another way of, of looking at this, and you might actually like this way better. I'm going to go ahead and make a vertical line right next to the graph. 
I'm going to put some tick marks on this number line here. And we're going to see this. Look at this. I'm going to track the altitude of the graph here. And so I start at altitude 1. So here's 1 here. Now all I'm doing is finding another way of getting this. And then I, the altitude changes up to what? It changes to 3. So we go altitude 3. We turn around. We go all the way down to sea level, to altitude 0. And then we turn around and we go to altitude 2 or the height of 2. And then we turn around and go all the way to the altitude of negative 3. And that's where we end. But notice that this graph in some twisted way, or this diagram is the same as this diagram. We want to write our answer like this, but you see how we started right here at time equals negative 2, and we went this way. We went in the positive direction. The positive direction on the y-axis is up. We turned around, so you can see, look at this. We turned around. It's describing the same thing. It goes like that. So some people will do this when they have a problem like this. They'll just go ahead and do that and track what happens. It almost looks like this graph right here got smushed. And it looks it kind of looks like the same graph. And then we translate it to this. And so this describes or represents the motion of the bug. Okay, and we also are introduced to negative times, which is not that bad. It's just what's happening like two seconds ago. So that is the deal. Um, resting. Okay, so resting means velocity zero. That means you're not going to the left, you're not going to the right. And it could just be really quickly. And so it looks like your rest times are where? The rest times happen to be, and these are times. So negative one seconds, one second, and three seconds. So I'll write that down. One second and three seconds. That's when the bug is resting. Now if you look at this graph here, that looks like the tops of hills and the bottoms of valleys. Those are called local mins and local maxes, or local maxes, local mins. And so those are the resting times. So in your homework on bug one, they'll give you diagrams like this. They'll give you graphs of the position function. And they'll ask you to draw a diagram to represent the motion of the bug. Okay, you could, you could do it this way, or you could do it the way I was doing. Just making sure you track times, you label times at the turnaround points. And so we didn't really do any calculus, but we um, are preparing to learn about velocity and derivatives and things like that. So this concludes bug one. Our next lecture will be bug two.